Welcome to this tutorial in this series of From Ground Zero tutorials. In today's session, we are going to discuss about user stories. As you know, user stories are one of the ways in which we capture the requirements. Just a little bit about myself. My name is Abhishek Srivastava. I am an author, a blogger and I have been into IT for several years. Incidentally, I have also written a few books as shown here. Let's come back to our topic of today, which is a user story. A user story is a format or a structure which is used to present the requirements from the end user perspective. So important point to note is that these formats are written from the actual user of the system perspective. Considering that, let's look at the format of the user story. User story has three parts and it is written in this format. As a user role, I want to perform something in the system so that I can achieve some goal. Naturally speaking, a, a, an end user is going to work with the system to perform some action for example, to register themselves or to make a purchase or to search something. So this is the format of a user story. Taking an example, as a user, I want to search for flight tickets as per my schedule so that I can attend a business conference. Here we are covering three aspects. One, who is performing this activity? what activity is being performed and why that activity is being performed. Naturally, you might think about, so what are use cases made for? Is there any difference between use cases and the user stories? Now, both these formats of capturing requirements are captured from the end user perspective. The only difference being the user stories also capture the purpose as to why something is being done. Use cases is more like a visual representation, whereas user story in the format in which it is written is more like a text-based capturing of the requirements. These are the differences. However, we can combine user stories as well with a visual model so as we can complete the entire capturing of the requirements. So we are now going to see a model which is given by Ron Jeffries, known as user story 3C. So there are three Cs which are captured along with the user story. So these are captured in the card, which the card on one hand or one side shows the user story and the details about the user stories, known as conversation. So during your requirement elicitation process, you will keep discussing with the customer and stakeholders about what is to be done, what are the different details of the requirements. So that will be or that is known as conversation. The third part is since we are capturing the requirements, we also need to know how is the customer going to verify and confirm that this requirement is implemented correctly in the system. So that is what is captured as confirmation. So we can say that this is the acceptance test criteria captured along with the user story. All of that is done in the form of a card. On the front page of the card, we will have the basic user story written and the details of the conversation which can be in the form of a prototype, a screen with the details of the screen or with the details of the fields. On the back side of it, we will write different acceptance criteria or acceptance test cases. Let's take an example to understand it. So we'll pick up the same example which we saw in the previous slide. Here a user is going to search for flight tickets to attend a business conference. This is the front side of the card where on the top we have the user story written as a visitor I would search for flights so that I can plan my trip. At the bottom of it, 
we have the screen prototype which shows which are the fields which are going to be there. Along with that, on the right hand side you can see the specifications for each field is also mentioned. For example, on the top we have said the from field will have autofill or selection capability. That means as we type in the name of the city from where the end user is supposed to fly, the system will automatically fill it. These are the newer features which have come into all the modern systems and it helps the user as well as the system to capture the correct authenticated city names wherever there are airports. So in this front part of the card, we will capture all the details relating to the fields which are available on the screen. We can also capture business rules. If required, you can also have another version of this card and it can be serialized. This is part one of the same user story. In the part two, you can have an activity diagram or a flow chart. Now let's go to the back of the card. On the back of the card, we have the confirmation section where we capture what are the acceptance test scenarios. So for every requirement, there could be successful scenario or there could be alternative scenarios. Alternative scenarios represent cases where things go wrong or may go wrong. Then what is supposed to be done in those cases? For example, it is possible that on the given date and time which the end user has selected, there may be no flights. In that case, what is the system supposed to do? Is it just going to show you the message saying that there are no flights for the given day or it will show why don't you search for an alternative day? So there could be a provision to move to the next date search or a previous day search. So that depends how customer would like to take this functionality ahead. So here we will capture what are the successful scenarios and what are the alternate scenarios. Accordingly, the system will be tested, but prior to that, accordingly, the developer will use these confirmation criteria as well to make sure that all the related aspects is also covered during the coding and design phase. Couple of points to note about the user stories. User stories are not meant for agile methodologies alone. There is a general perception that user stories can only be used in agile methodologies. That is not true. It can be used in any methodology, including waterfall, OAD, or any method methodology you want to use. You can use user stories and replace it or use it in place of other techniques like UML modeling. The idea behind using any form of modeling or any form of capturing requirements is to make sure that everybody is able to understand it properly. If you are going to use a modeling technique or if you are going to use a technique to capture requirements, please make sure that all the stakeholders are aligned to these kind of new formats or techniques. So if you make a diagram which stakeholder is completely uncomfortable with in terms of understanding, it does not serve the purpose. Okay. So, these are the two important points which must be kept in mind while using user stories. Do send us any queries on user stories or any related videos which we are making to the address given here. Thanks for being part of this video.